Round three. Welcome to the Pond Hunter broadcast from the Under the Sea Radio Show on Blog Talk Radio. The Pond Hunter, in the pursuit of all things aquatic. Take a look into the world of koi ponds, water gardens, and the lifestyles of the aquatically obsessed. Meet the pros, hobbyists, and cover some no-nonsense pond advice straight from the field. The Pond Hunter, in the pursuit of all things aquatic. Here's your host, koi pond and water garden expert, Mike Gannon. Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome to the Pond Hunter Radio Broadcast, episode 43. I'm your host, Mike Gannon, and happy to be here with you. Um, I'm the owner of Full Service Aquatics, which is a company based in Summit, New Jersey, and it's chilly right now in Jersey. It's winter. It's officially winter, and the chilly winds are blowing. And what my company is doing right now is winter services for ponds in this area. So the service techs are doing all the, you know, winter tasks, and among them is installing aerators for the winter months for those pond owners that do not run year round aeration. And you know why we're doing that? I'll tell you why this episode of the pond hunter radio broadcast is dedicated to aeration, fresh air. It's what we all need. Life giving oxygen rich air. And yet oddly enough, the air we breathe is mostly nitrogen for real. The air that we breathe pretty much all day, every day, as much as we can get, is 78% nitrogen and 21% oxygen. Some water vapor and other gases in there too. But why does oxygen get all the attention? 21%? Come on. I think I'm going to be turning into a nitrogen guy. Don't get me wrong. Oxygen's great. But coming in at 78%, that's impressive. Nitrogen. Nitrogen is where it's at, man. No doubt. Keep it pondy. Okay, I will. This is also where nitrogen leaves the conversation because we want that air in our ponds for the benefits of the oxygen, right? So those aerators that my guys are installing, um, I think are one of the most important pieces of equipment a pond keeper can have. It's not just a winter piece of equipment or summer. The aerator is really about the most important piece of equipment that a pond keeper can have. Every pond keeper should have one. And hopefully more pond keepers will take advantage of the great benefits of adding a bit of, a bit more aeration to their pond, or even making what they have more effective. And one of the most obvious benefits of good aeration is that if your pond suffers from like the main pump system failing, you have something to aerate your pond right on hand, an inexpensive, easy to store solution to a potentially very expensive problem. And I could end the show right on that benefit of aeration, but there's more, a lot more aeration is where it's at, baby. In this episode of the PHRB, episode 43, we're going to cover aeration. Aeration for your backyard pond, your koi pond, your water garden. And we'll even talk about natural ponds as well. We're going to cover how to aerate your pond, how to pick an air pump, methods of aeration, seasonal use of aerators, emergency aeration, the overall benefits of properly aerating your pond, and how we can get that fresh air into our ponds more effectively to get results and benefits. The bulk, the overwhelming majority of oxygen intake for our ponds happens right on the surface of the pond where our liquid pond comes into contact with our gaseous atmosphere. Where those two forms meet and butt up against each other there's an exchange that occurs between the water 
and the atmosphere. It's an exchange of gases, a gaseous exchange of oxygen and of ammonia. The pond takes in oxygen from the atmosphere. The atmosphere takes up the released ammonia. It's a nice relationship. It's cooperation, but it needs to be encouraged because there's a lot of things that can interrupt, impede, or completely cut off that cooperative exchange. Pollen, leaves, oils from acorns, from chestnuts, beech nuts, and lots of other natural occurrences can cover the surface of a pond and cut off that gaseous ex exchange. So we need to make sure that we are agitating the surface of our ponds to encourage that exchange. Essentially, the objective of aeration is to agitate the surface of the water. We want to break up the surface area, create new surface area. As the bubbles from an aeration system rise up and bubble and pop at the top surface of the pond, that action is creating new surface area and creating new opportunities for gaseous exchange. The more, more surface area we can create, the more efficiently that exchange takes place. The contact time occurs while the bubble is rising to the surface is usually pretty fleeting, but there is some benefit from that action. The size of the bubble and how long the bubble stays in contact with the water are the primary factors of how efficiently oxygen is exchanged. Aeration it really is not exactly the same as oxygenation. It's definitely not nitrogenification. And as you know, I'm a nitrogen guy. Aeration is more of a method of oxygenating your pond. And when we pump atmospheric air into our ponds, we are creating conditions which allow for greater absorption of oxygen into our water, thereby oxygenating our ponds. Aerating our ponds is at the exact same time releasing gases from our pond with our primary concern being ammonia, which escapes from our ponds as a gas. And aerating our ponds, agitating the surface of our ponds, gets that ammonia out of our ponds. It also lets out chlorine and other gas introduced when, when we do water changes or are topping off our ponds. Aerating our ponds really is as much about the release of gas from our ponds as it is the introduction of oxygen. So by default, we're oxygenating our pond. And it sounds nicer telling a client that I want them to have a pond that is rich in purifying oxygen than it is to tell them that they got a gassy pond. Woo! Your pond's gassy, lady. But it's true, that smell, that gassy, sulfury smell, that's what we're getting out of our ponds. That's the ammonia and whatnot. It, it's, the, it's the crap that happens when a pond is allowed to go bad and when a pond is totally neglected, mismanaged, abused. Even for those ponds, there's hope and it's aeration. There's a lot of benefits to aeration, right? Higher oxygen, of course. Higher oxygen is good in a pond. Lower ammonia is good in a pond. We'll have healthier plants. Plants enjoy oxygen-rich water. We'll have healthier fish. Fish are the biggest consumers of the oxygen in our water. They need it. Let them have it. And of course, more efficient gaseous exchange. Good aeration should also kind of equal good gaseous exchange. De-icing is a benefit of aeration. Passive circulation. That air, those air bubbles, they're moving water. Higher water quality and all the benefits that go with that, like clear water, helps to keep, uh, the aeration essentially helps to keep water clean by forcing solids into suspension longer, allowing for improved removal of particulate matter. In other words, it aids in mechanical filtration. And it can prevent um, severe stratification in natural ponds or farm, farm ponds or uh, mud bottom, larger scale ponds. Lots of ways to aerate a pond, lots of equipment to help you do it. So let's talk about some of the methods of aeration that uh, pond keepers should and could be doing. Um, of course, the air pumps. Air pumps come in all assorted sizes, prices, varying degrees of power, 
varying qualities. Use outdoor pond specific air pumps, not aquarium pumps. The air pump is the most basic method of aeration. Its sole purpose is to pump into your pond. However, they're still really versatile when you know how to use them. And you don't really just treat them as something you plug in and walk away from. But the truth, I mean, if even if you set them up smart, you can kind of plug in and walk away. But uh, get just get a quality pump. I'm not really I'm not talking about any of the cheap plastic air pumps. I'm talking about real outdoor rated weather resistant air pumps for your pond. Pumps are typically rated on the depth that they will pump to. So look out for that. How deep can they pump? And a good pump for a backyard pond, they probably start at like a hundred bucks. They're worth every penny, every centavo, man. Um, and I mean that they'll, they'll start at like a hundred bucks for a small backyard pond. I've sold aeration systems in the many thousands of dollars range, just to give you some perspective. If you have a quarter acre pond, you're going to be spending more than a hundred bucks. I assure you. And on that note, whether your pond is several acres or a four by six backyard pond, the aerator is still about the most important piece of equipment you can have. So if you ever want to know some of the brands or anything that, that I would use, I recommend go ahead and contact me. You can get in touch with me, email, call, Facebook, whatever. I'm um, getting in contact. I will share um, what brands I would recommend for air pumps. Um, another great method of um, aeration is skimming. Skimmers are a great way to keep your pond clean. They're amazing mechanical filters. They're extremely efficient methods of aeration also. Skimmers are such an important component of our filtration systems. Skimmers create uh, an ever-expanding surface area, which is constantly releasing gases and bringing in oxygen. The surface area of a pond becomes exponentially larger with effective skimming, right? So skimmers really are super effective. And they just make life a lot easier with your pond, too. There's so many different benefits to skimming. That's a whole other topic. So one of my favorite pieces of equipment. Um, <clears throat> waterfalls and streams also. I mean, as a, as a design aspect of a water garden, koi pond, whatever, water feature, waterfalls and streams offer tremendous opportunity for aeration. Faster moving water tumbling, crashing, churning. Water from streams and waterfalls are tremendous forms of aerating a pond. Of course, well-designed waterfalls and stream add the dimension of visual beauty and auditory enhancement, enjoyment as well. So there's, a, there's lots of good reasons for waterfalls and streams, but we're talking about O2. Um, spitters and fountains also those are very like decorative, fun ways to aerate a pond while adding some of your personality to your pond. Recirculating water from submerged pumps. Hmm. So <clears throat> circulating a pond is an effective way to aerate a pond. It's very effective, of course. But I think the key to using submerged pumps is to control how the water is being pumped within the pond. I mean, like how much water is being pumped, what direction, what's it being pointed at? Where's that water being distributed toward? You got to be uh, very aware of that stuff. Those also, you don't just plug them in and walk away and, and have this geyser spouting off in the middle of your pond or the interior of your pond being blown all over the place during the winter time. You know, you, you just, don't want that. So I'm not crazy about using submerged pumps in this way. They have, uh, I think, many other more effective uses. But anyway, it is a way of ox oxygenation, aeration. Protein skimming also is a method of filtration, sometimes used on ponds, which offers massive oxygenation benefits and aggressive ammonia removal. Those are usually utilized by, um, I think, more like koi, Kichi, 
high-end koi keepers, stuff like that. But they're very effective. So check them out. If you're not familiar with them, protein skimmers for ponds, check it out. So all of those are valid ways to aerate your pond. And used together, they can create some pretty great water quality. Several of them rely on diffusers to get the job done. So diffusers come in glass, stone, silicone, rubber, wooden. Um, they can produce bubbles that are big and coarse or, or fine. There can be bubble walls, bubble wands, bubble discs, small diffusers, huge diffusers, modular diffusers. Some diffusers produce very, very fine bubbles. Other create medium to coarse bubbles. So most diffusers I see work fairly well. Um, some of them are better than others. All have the good and bad points. For backyard ponds, I tend to stick to air stones that will give off a medium diffused bubble. That's kind of my go-to size for everything I do with air pumps, pretty much. Um, not everything, but pretty much. With the air bubbles, uh, that's another thing. You need to choose how diffused you want your air bubbles, big bubbles or small bubbles. The variable and bubble size goes back to what the pond keeper is trying to achieve. Sometimes a large, coarse bubble is going to do the job. Sometimes a very, very fine bubble is going to be needed. The bottom line of any bubble is that as long as the bubble uh, is that as the bubble rises through the water column toward the surface, the bubble is giving off oxygen. How long it takes for that bubble to rise through the water column is called contact time. Generally speaking, the more contact time, the more effectively we are oxygenating and degassing our ponds. And contact time can be manipulated by forcing the bubble to stay in the water column longer or allowing it to rise unfettered. For general purposes, a medium-sized bubble is good for backyard ponds and natural ponds, farm ponds. Coarse bubbles are good for moving water. You have slow dead spots in your pond. You want to move a little bit of water, some passive circulation, big coarse bubbles. They're going to move water around. A very fine bubble would be used for something like protein skimming. Protein skimming with big coarse bubbles would be useless. So use your bubbles the way they will be most effective. And be careful where you place your diffusers. You got to consider form and function. Don't make aeration ugly. Don't leave airlines floating around your pond. Hide them. And be careful where the surface agitation is taking place. Surface agitation reduces visibility. You may have um, no oxygen issues, but you haven't seen your fish in two years because you have all the surface agitation happening right smack in the middle of your pond. So choose the right place for your diffusers. Don't make aeration ugly. Here's some suggestions. Put diffusers below waterfalls where the water comes into the pond. Put a diffuser down below that. That's a great way to churn and mix oxygen really efficiently in that area, and you don't see the agitated surface. Place them along the sides of the pond where water doesn't move as fast, and it's not going to obstruct visibility. Put them behind rock walls. You have rocks, rock and gravel on your pond? Decision, but if you have slow areas behind rocks, um, stick a diffuser back there. Um, just generally slow moving areas of the pond, sometimes where you put plants and stuff like that. Water doesn't move that much. Um, that's a good place to put the diffusers. Try to keep the diffuser about a foot off the bottom of the pond. Um, you can have bad aeration. <clears throat> Too aggressive? Overly aerating, especially small volumes of water, can kill fish. And I've done it, I'm sorry to say. I've aerated the shit out of some fish and lost them. Too little aeration is useless. A, a couple few bubbles each minute, and that ain't helping you out too much. Neither if the airline is floating on top, bubbling away on the surface. You're not really helping yourself. So poorly placed aeration effects. You can also block skimming zones as well as disrupt viewing. Um, I've seen aeration blocking leaves and floating debris from passing into skimmers. So um, poorly placed aeration can completely block viewing of fish as well in a otherwise clear water pond. 
right? So be careful. Remember, make don't let aeration be ugly. Um, seasonal aeration, summertime aeration should be happening in ponds of sustained higher temperatures. In New Jersey, we can get a week or more of sustained 100 plus degree days. Pond keepers, like take a guy like Brad Cassie out in Arizona, where they're dealing with temperatures up to 100 degree, 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Hot weather brings the need for a bit of help with oxygen levels. So have your air pump ready during the height of summer. And when you're dealing with higher temperatures, you want to try and get your diffusers a little deeper into the water than you would for winter temperatures. It'll raise oxygen levels faster, especially if you're having an emergency. Having the diffusers on the bottom for the short term is a good, good thing. Usually I don't like having diffusers all the way in the bottom. Um, unless it's an emergency. If your air, you know, speaking of emergencies, a lot of this stuff happens because of chlorine issues. So if you're aerating because of a chlorine related emergency, you forgot to use dechlorinator or something, aggressive aeration with the diffuser on the bottom of the pond is good for a short period of time. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Have your air pumps ready for winter, too, though. If you live in colder climates, if you live where it freezes, have the air pumps ready to work. I deal with some pretty cold weather conditions in my area of the U.S. Freezing and below freezing temperatures can be from November, uh, late October through March. That's pretty normal conditions for my area in New Jersey, the Northeast U.S. New Jersey gets cold, man. It does. I've seen white walkers on the New Jersey Parkway. Exit 142, to be exact. Obviously, to the north of me is even colder. And looking south of me, man, even Florida and Georgia get hit with freezing weather here and there. So the use of de-icers of various types is pretty common. But hands down, air pumps are by far the best method of de-icing a pond. They're incredibly efficient and really do a great job. Even under full ice cover, when um, temperatures are in the single digits, they're still doing a good job. When floating de-icers are fro frozen into the ice, air pumps will keep plugging away, but use them smartly. When you're using air pumps to de-ice your pond, be sure that you're placing diffusers closer to the surface of the pond. Since we're pumping colder air, we don't want to pump that cold air down to the bottom of the pond, which is ironically the warm part of the pond during the winter months. I think in a pond that's <clears throat> three to five feet deep, I'd try to keep the diffuser about one foot deep in the water. Anything deeper than that, maybe down to two feet below water level. Um, anything less, I'd recommend really keeping it about eight inches deep. That's how deep the diffuser during winter months um, probably should be and adjust accordingly. These are general suggestions. Every pond, every pond is unique, every situation is unique. De-icing with aeration, I think is super effective <clears throat> and under normal conditions, will easily keep an opening in the ice. And like I said, even when a pond is under a full blanket of ice, good aeration keeps degassing the pond effectively with the gases simply being rerouted and escaping from under the ice along the edges of the pond. A full covering of ice is not an airtight covering. So gases can still get out and oxygen can still get in. So don't go and break the ice if you have a good aerator running, even if it's not um, opening the surface any longer. Don't break the ice in general. The important thing to remember is that there's a tactic to how you use your diffuser in your pond, depending on what you're trying to accomplish. Aeration for chlorine issue will be different from aeration for de-icing. Um, and aerating natural ponds. Let's talk about that real quick. The most basic step toward improving water quality, I pretty much always tell my natural pond clients, is aeration. That's it. If you don't have a big budget, um, or you're not looking to do anything cool or innovative or anything like that, basic aeration goes a long way. And when you do aerate, you want to gradually move the aerator to the deepest part of the pond. Don't, for those kind of ponds, um, don't just go and throw the 
um, diffuser into the deepest end right away. Maybe over two to three days, slowly get it into the deepest area, um, slowly. And for extreme re rehabilitation of a pond, a natural pond like that, definitely aerate from the deepest portion of the pond, okay? Sometimes we need aeration under emergency circumstances. Power outages will come to mind. And if you ever find yourself in such a scenario, a five-gallon bucket can be a very good friend. Some things you can do in, a, in an emergency, you can stir your pond. You can take your five-gallon bucket and you can pour water back into your pond. Fill it up halfway or all the way, depending on how much you want to lift and weight, and pour it from about two feet high right back into the pond. That way you can circulate and oxygenate your pond for emergency purposes. There's also manual pumps and, of course, battery-powered air pumps, which you can get in bait shops So, um, and from, I'm sure, uh, pond companies as well. So without that aeration, everything in our pond will go to hell pretty quick. Aerators are one of the most important pieces of equipment every pond owner should have. I hope... You've all grabbed a good couple of tidbits of information here to make your pond keeping experience more informed and enjoyable. Aeration is central to all of our pond keeping practices. So learn how to do it right. In this podcast, as part of your, use the podcast as part of your information and go out, learn more from other sor sources. There's a, a lot of great information out there. Reach out to your local pond professional. Get to know your local pond pro. I can help you in a general sense with this podcast, but getting in touch with a pond pro that services your local area and is familiar with all the local conditions and factors of pond keeping is a valuable source of information. So get to know your local pond pro. If you need a, a local pond pro recommendation, get in touch with me and I'll hook you up. I got your back. Um, my name is Mike Annan, everybody. Thanks so much for checking out the podcast. You can find more Yes, more Pond Hunter on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, of course, Blog Talk Radio, and iTunes. Leave a comment, leave a rating if you'd be so kind, and check out the Love Your Pond blog, too. My website is fullserviceaquatics.com. You can find the blog there. My company is Full Service Aquatics, based out of Summit, New Jersey. Hey, if you have a project that you're considering and would like to talk to us, we're easy to get in touch with. Thanks again, everybody. Take care and uh, share the pond keeping lifestyle with everyone you can. Be good to each other. We'll see you next time on the Pond Hunter Radio Broadcast. You have been listening to the Pond Hunter Radio Broadcast on Blog Talk Radio with your host, Mike Gannon, the Pond Hunter. In the pursuit of all things aquatic, broadcasting Wednesday nights on Blog Talk Radio, the Pond Hunter. Keeping it pondy for the aquatically obsessed. See you next time, everybody. <laughs>